everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for today's webinar, Making Special Student Accommodations. Today, we're going to talk through quite a few different things, but before we get started, I wanted to just encourage you to enter any questions that you have in the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I just realized I didn't introduce myself. My name is Victoria Kelly. I'm part of our training and support team here at Hawks Learning, and I hope that this, this session will be very informative for you. We'll reserve some time at the end of my presentation for any questions. So again, please feel free to enter those into the Q&A area. We'll go ahead and dive on in. So the, the purpose of today's session is to teach you different ways that you can utilize the gradebook to accommodate any students who maybe need a special due date, um, an extension, unsubmitting the test, um, or maybe just direct correspondence with just that particular student. The gradebook has um, accessibility for that and so much more. So we're gonna just highlight those things today. The first thing I wanted to take a look at together is how we can edit a, a lesson due date for one particular student. So the way we can do that is by going to our reports tab and going to detailed student grades. Go ahead and filter to your, the student that you want to view the grades for pulling myself, <laughs> as you can see. This will allow you to see all of the students' assignments um, assigned to their class and to them themselves. You'll be able to see their overall grade, their progress so far. Let's say that we need to extend their due date for a student. We can certainly do that by using the actions column here. There's a little ellipses button here that will allow us to edit the due date give them a little bit of an extension if needed. This can be used so that the due date doesn't, or not the due date, but the uh, lesson late penalty doesn't apply if that's something you have set up for your course. Something else I wanted to talk about is how we can edit the web test dates for a particular student as well. So that would also be here in our detailed student grades. So I would just walk down to the test area, go ahead and click here, and uh, this would allow me to update my student settings. It's gonna bring me directly to the student settings by student. And from here, this is the best way that I can use to give a special accommodation such as time and a half, or maybe a makeup exam, multiple attempts. You can also do this initially when you are setting up the exam. So if you have a few students who you know you need to set up time and a half or a makeup exam ahead of time, this is the best way to do that. Student settings by student. Only thing to keep in mind is you will wanna make sure you assign the lesson or assignment rather to your class before going to this um, particular settings area. That way, whenever you type the student's name, it knows where to pull those students from, which section. Moving on, I also wanted to talk about how you can unsubmit a web test attempt from a student. So maybe you get a frantic email from a student saying, I don't know what happened, my test went ahead and submitted. Um, it could have been maybe if their dog stepped on their keyboard and, and accidentally clicked the submit button, things happen. Um, so we can definitely work around that. A way you can do that is by going to the assignments tab and going to edit scores by student. When you go to edit scores by student, you can filter through your sections, choose the student's name, and this will allow you to see the student's assignments tied to their section and to the student themselves. And from here, if it's a test attempt, you'll see the option to unsubmit the attempt. And in that scenario that I described earlier with the student and their dog, <laughs> this would allow the student to resume the same web test attempt and see the identical question value. So they can just pick, that, pick up where they left off there. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about, speaking of tests, is how we can give partial credit to students whenever we're reviewing their web test attempts. So the best way to do that is to go to Reports tab again and the Assignment Reviewer. 
earlier, I actually was talking about this in the separate webinar, about how much I love the assignment reviewer tool. If you have not gotten to explore this um, particular tool yet, I definitely encourage you to dive in and just explore. It has so many wonderful features. I'll go ahead and click on my web test area. I'll go ahead and open up this grammar diagnostic. <laughs> Excuse me. And then that's going to allow me to see my student roster. This is just an example grade book. It's just me in this section. Um, but you would see all of the students here. Whenever you click on the student's name, that's how you can go ahead and jump into their attempt. If they have more than one attempt, it will show here. And so here I'm going to go ahead and review my attempt. My computer is being a little slow, so I apologize for the delay. All right. And if it is your first time opening the tool, um, it will give you those, um, those tips that you're seeing here, where it's kind of making a shadow in the background. It's just kind of highlighting the different areas of the tool. So this will allow me to toggle through the student's actual attempt um, in each question that they worked on. So I can see the correct answer versus the incorrect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you though, we have where you can see it's zero out of two points. This question was wrong. So if I wanted to give partial credit, I can click my cursor into the type box, backspace the zero, and then put a one. So that is always an option if you'd like to give partial credit. The last thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to just escape here so I can close this tab. It opens in a new tab here. The last thing I wanted to talk about is how you can correspond directly with a student using our individual um, inbox within the, the Hawks platform. So actually, let's see, I'm going to escape again and go back because the assignment reviewer opens in a new, new tab as well. Go back to full screen here. And if we go under the tools tab, and we go to our handy communications area. This is where you can view your, um, your Hawks inbox. So if we go to our personal inbox, we're going to see any items that the students have sent to us through Hawks, such as items from the send to instructor button in practice. Um, if we want to compose an email to a particular student, we can click the compose button and that will allow us to search our student roster to see our students. As I mentioned earlier, I'm the only one here in my class. So there's me. I'll email myself and then I can go ahead and send an email directly to the student. It's going to go to their Hawks account. So whenever they open up their dashboard, they'll see a notification by the inbox envelope in the top right hand side of their um, student page. It's also going to forward this message to the student's email that's associated with their Hawks account. So likely their school email. So hopefully this will just help you with communicating with your students. Another way you can do this outside of this particular tool, of course, this is just going straight to the inbox, would be to go to this reports area and then detailed student grades where we were earlier. And then this would allow me to see the student's information. So I can see their email address here um, if I want to go ahead and, and email them from within my school's email account. So I hope that this helps. There are so many wonderful ways to connect with our students. If we do this in email here as well, that would allow us to um, send one directly from this report too. Um, as you can see, so there's kind of a couple of different areas that you can um, check off items, really check in on the progress and reach out to these students. Um, of course, I do want to encourage you to encourage your students to reach out to us if they have any questions about navigating Hawks. We have lots of wonderful student resources, so they can always reach out to us with any questions that they have. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to go ahead and check our Q&A box.
If you do have any questions, feel free to go ahead and type those in now. I don't see any right now at this time. So if you do think of any questions later, you can feel free to give us a call. We have our phone hours Monday through Friday, eight in the morning to 10 at night Eastern. And then we have a 24 seven live chat as well. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Also our training team can be contacted via email at training at hawkslearning.com. Thank you everyone so much for coming to today's webinar and I hope that we'll see you in a few of our other sessions. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up for today and wish you the very best this semester. Bye everyone.